Hello. Welcome. Or welcome back to my channel. My name's Anna. Nice to meet you. Or see you again. If you don't already know, I make fun, cozy, little crochet and knit content. And today I decided to put y'all on the holiday spirit. Not because this is holiday related, but it's a gift from me to you. It is the free tutorial for my most popular pattern, the Oopsie Daisy Purse. I love this pattern. I think it is perfect for all seasons. I would categorize it as an advanced beginner because it uses some complicated techniques, but nothing that you guys can't learn. I have nothing but faith in you. It's comprised mainly of the Jasmine Stitch. It's super plush, nice and structured, and it has a little bit of cardboard at the bottom as well as a zipper at the top that gives it a little more structure and security. I just think it's the perfect handbag. Like maybe I'm biased, but I really, I really do think it's the perfect handbag. So this tutorial will tell you everything you need to know to make one, but if videos aren't for you and you like something written, I'd still have the pattern available on all my platforms. I will have them all linked down below if you'd like to get that. I think there's something else I was going to say, but I surely cannot remember it now. So all I'm going to say is I hope you have fun making this. I had fun making it for you. Everyone deserves to have an oopsie daisy purse in their life. And without further ado, we're going to jump into it. Let's start with materials. You'll of course need yarn. This pattern calls for about 200 grams of DK weight yarn. I'm using Paintbox Simply DK, but you can use any DK weight yarn as long as it obtains gauge. You'll also need a 4mm crochet hook and a pair of scissors, plus a needle for sewing. I used a sharp yarn needle with some yarn, but I recommend a standard needle and thread for beginners. This is to sew on the 7 inch zipper that you'll be using for the top of the purse. And optional are ball needles to pin the zipper in place if you aren't comfortable sewing more freehand. Um, and lastly, it isn't shown here, but you will need a piece of cardboard that you will cut to put in the bottom of the purse to give it more structure. To begin, you're going to start by taking your yarn and making a slip knot. And then you're going to chain one and pull this loop out until you get to about this length. It doesn't have to be exact, you just wanna pull the loop out so you can, you know, freely move it around. Then you're going to yarn over and you're going to insert your hook into that first chain and you're going to pull through. You should now have three loops on your hook. You're gonna repeat the same process of yarning over and inserting your hook into that first chain, pulling through. You now have five loops on your hook. You're gonna do this a third time, yarn over, insert your hook into that first chain and pull through. You now have seven loops on your hook. Now you're going to hold the yarn with your index finger and as you're holding the yarn down, you're going to use your hook to grab it See how as I'm grabbing it, there is still, the yarn is looped around my finger like that. You're gonna pull through all seven loops on your hook. You're then going to take your hook and insert it into that loop that is on your finger. That is your eighth loop. Each puff stitch is made up of eight loops. You're gonna let go. You can pull it a little bit taut, just so the two loops on your hook are more snug. Once you have those two snug loops on your hook, you're going to yarn over and pull through both loops just like that. This is your first puff stitch. You're going to chain one and you're going to repeat what we just did. So you're going to, in that chain one, pull it out a little bit further, yarn over, and then you're going to insert your hook into the top of your first puff stitch. If you could see right here, there is a bit of an opening right there. That's where we're going to insert our hook. So we're going to put it through, pull the yarn through so we have three loops on the hook, yarn over, insert the hook, pull through, yarn over a third time, insert the hook, yarn over and pull through. We now should have seven loops on our hook. You're going to hold your yarn with your index finger, grab the yarn with your hook, making sure that it is still wrapped around your index finger, and pull through all seven of the loops that were on your hook. 
then insert your hook into the yarn being held by your index finger. You can pull it a little bit taut so those two loops are comfortably sitting on the hook. And then you're going to yarn over and pull through both loops on your hook. You're going to repeat this until you have a total of 12 puff stitches. Once you have all of your puff stitches done, it should look a little something like this, and then we can start working the actual jasmine stitch, which is what the entirety of this purse, for the most part, is made up of. To do this, we're going to work a stitch that's very, very similar to the puff stitch that we just did. It just has a couple of additional steps. It's what makes it look like the petals of a flower when it's all built up. It looks super gorgeous. You should have ended with a chain one just like you were ending any other puff stitch if you were to continue. You're going to do the same thing we did before. You're going to pull that loop out a little bit, yarn over, and you're gonna do everything that we did up until when we put our finger to hold the yarn, okay? So that we have three loops on our hook right now, yarn over, insert, now we have five loops, yarn over, insert, now we have seven loops, okay? Normally this is where we would put our finger here. We're not going to do that. We're going to yarn over and we're going to insert our hook into the space between the 11th and the 12th puff stitch. So we're going to insert and we're going to pull up one. That is the first loop of our second continuous puff stitch. The jasmine stitch is essentially three puff stitches worked all together at the same time. So you just pulled up your first loop. You have eight loops over here, including that final yarn over. So you have one that you just pulled up, yarn over two, insert into that same space between the 11th and the 12th puff stitch, yarn over and pull up three, yarn over, insert, you're going to pull up four, yarn over for five, six, and then your final one right there. Then you're going to repeat that same thing. You're going to insert and pull up one, yarn over two, insert for three, yarn over for four, insert for five, yarn over for six, insert for seven, and then here you're going to do what we did before. You're going to put your finger on the yarn, you're going to grab it with your hook, and you're going to pull through every single loop on your hook. It can get a little tricky. Just take it slow, just like that. You're going to insert your finger into the loop that was on your finger. You're going to yarn over and you're going to pull through both of those loops. And you have the first part of your jasmine stitch. Let's do that one more time just in case it was a little confusing. So now that we have the yarn pulled through those two loops, we're going to chain one just like we did before. We're going to pull up that that chain one that we just did, yarn over, that is our second loop, insert your hook now into this space between those three puff stitches. You're going to insert your hook right here, you're going to yarn over and you're going to pull up your third loop, yarn over for four, you're going to insert your hook, yarn over, pull through for five, yarn over for six, insert, yarn over, and pull up for seven, and then you're going to yarn over for eight. Now, without pulling any of these loops off your hook, you're going to insert your hook between the 10th and 11th puff stitch. So you're going to insert, yarn over, and pull up one. This is the first stitch of the second technical puff stitch. You're going to yarn over for two, insert for three, yarn over for four, insert for five, yarn over for six, insert for seven, yarn over for eight, and repeat this one final time between the ninth and the tenth puff stitches right here. So insert, pull through one, yarn over two, insert, yarn over three, four, five, six, seven, and then before you do the eighth, we're going to put our finger on the yarn and 
then grab the yarn and pull through all the loops on our hook before inserting our hook into that yarn that was being held on our finger. Pull it a little bit taut here. That's what's going to make the flowers look best, I've found. Otherwise, it will be a bit of a looser gauge. Then you're going to yarn over and pull through both of the loops on your hook. You're gonna chain one, and you're going to repeat that process all the way until the end, and then I'll show you what to do next. We have now made it to the end of our first row, and working into this first puff stitch is a little challenging, so I figured I'd show you. So we're just gonna keep doing what we've been doing before, same process. Now when we're working into this, doing that last third of the jasmine stitch, we're just going to do the best that we can to find that initial chain that we made the first puff stitch into. It's a little challenging. I sometimes find that working right behind the puff stitch is helpful. So I find the, ch the chain right here and I just work what I've been doing before. Now that we have the first row of the jasmine stitch done, we are going to turn our work, but before jumping into the actual stitch pattern, you need to set up a foundational puff every row. For us, that was the 12th puff stitch that we worked in the initial base puff stitches. So technically the bottom only has 11, with the 12th one being right there on the edge in the corner. So that's what this one's going to be. You're just going to do a puff stitch like we did in the beginning. Four, five, six, seven. Put your finger to hold the yarn. Yarn over and pull through. Chain one. Now you're just going to repeat the same process. Another seven rows, okay? It's going to have a total of eight rows for the panel. I will come back right at the end once I have finished mine, show you how to tie off, and then we'll do a second one. Once you have gotten to the end of your eighth row, you're just going to chain one as if you were to start another puff stitch and then cut it off. And this is the first panel of your Oopsie Daisy purse. You're gonna go ahead and make a second one of these and then we'll come back and we will start making the bottom. So for me, I am switching to a different color for the bottom, the top, and the handle of the bag. However, I most of the time keep it the same color. Like I said, this is just the yarn that I have laying around. So I am switching to a turquoise to start making the top and bottom and the side of the bag. The bottom is made of two different parts. It's made of an oopsie daisy portion and then a half double crocheted portion with a piece of cardboard in between to give it a sturdier base so it holds up with a little more structure than I find other crochet bags too. So all we're going to do for the first part is make the 12 puff stitches that we made before and work two rows of the jasmine stitch. going to make the half double crochet piece that will keep the cardboard in between the jasmine stitch piece and the half double crochet. So we're going to start by making a slip knot and we are going to chain 36.
Once you have chained 36, you're going to work a half double crochet into the third chain from your hook. So we're gonna go one, two, three, third chain. And work a half double crochet, and then we're going to half double crochet down the rest of the chain row. Now that you have half double crocheted down the entire row, you should have 34 half double crochets in this row. You're going to chain one, turn your work, and then work an additional four rows of half double crochets. Once you get to the end, you can just chain one and tie off. Now we're going to go ahead and we're going to make the handle. It's going to be basically the same as what we did for the bottom. We're only going to work two rows, except you're going to start with a base of 45 puff stitches. So it's obviously going to be much longer. The handle makes up the sides as well as the handle over top of the bag, which means it has to be quite long for it to sit comfortably on someone's shoulder. So we're going to start by making 45 puff stitches and then working two rows with the jasmine stitch before chaining one and cutting off like we have with the others. Now we're going to go ahead and make the top piece of the purse. This is going to be the part that has the zipper on it. And this one's a little bit confusing because of the zipper. So I'm going to go slow and take you guys through every step. So start by making a slip knot and chain 38. Once you've chained 38, you're going to half double crochet into the third chain from the hook and then half double crochet down the entire row, just like we did for that second part of the bottom. Once you get to the end of the row, you should have 36 half double crochets. You're going to chain one, you're going to turn your work, and you're going to half double crochet down the row one more time. Once you get to the end of row two, we're going to chain three and turn our work. Next, we're going to work three triple crochets into the first three stitches. And then you're going to chain 30. Once you have chained 30, you're going to start another triple crochet 
in the third chain from the end. So right here. Do your very best to keep your chains laying flat so your top piece doesn't get twisted. And this can be a little bit confusing when you're first doing it, but if you have to undo and redo a couple of times, that's okay. Now that you have this, you're going to chain one, you're going to turn your work, and you're going to work half double crochets down this entire row. So you're going to work into those three triple crochets on each side, and then the 30 chains in the middle. You should have a total of 36 half double crochets, just like you did in your initial two rows. A pro tip as you're working into these chain stitches is to make sure that you're counting and to ensure that you have all of the half double crochets that you need by the end of the row. So if you remember from the first two rows, we had a total of 36 half double crochets in that row, meaning that you should have 36 half double crochets at the end of this row, even working into the chains. It could be a little bit confusing, so just make sure you work slowly, take your time, and count at the end. You can always undo it. You just want to make sure that it has the same number as those initial two rows. Once you get to this point, you are going to chain one and work another row of half double crochets, and then you can cut your yarn. Now we're gonna go ahead and we are going to attach the zipper to this top part of the purse. So you're gonna wanna flip it to the wrong side. And if you don't have experience sewing things like zippers or doing a lot of seaming or sewing, you can grab some um, sewing pins to help attach the zipper onto the top but I am just so used to making these that I'm just going to place the zipper on the back and sew without pinning it down first. Before you get started just take note of how the zipper is going to look. As you can see it gives a very fair amount of um, leeway so the zipper won't hopefully get stuck on your finished bag on the crochet but you might notice that you will need to pull the top part taut just to make sure that it fits comfortably. Otherwise, it'll kind of peek over at the end. So you're going to take a pretty long piece of yarn. You want to cut more than little just because it's easier to have extra. And you're going to feed it through a tapestry needle. I got this tapestry needle a while back in a knitting kit I believe from We Are Knitters and it's very good it's very pointy so it can get through the zipper and the yarn but if you don't have a high quality tapestry needle I recommend using classic thread and a smaller needle to sew this on I've done that for plenty in the past it's worked out just as good so you want to make sure that you're using something that will really get through the zipper and the crochet. So now you're just going to go through and you're just going to sew the zipper on. I'm going to start on the top right and I'm just going to insert my needle. I'm going to leave a tail just so it hopefully does not come undone. We will seal that up later. And you're just going to go through and sew the zipper on. Every couple of stitches I recommend just checking, making sure that it's at a fair distance away from the actual zippered top. You don't want it to start going over the top of the actual zipper. So just check every few if you don't have this buttoned down. Once you get to the end, you could just go and tie a knot. I'm just going to insert my yarn through the end, pull through my excess yarn. I cut too much and then just tie a knot. 
going to do that another two times just to make sure it's all tie off properly. Ending at the top corner. And now we're just going to keep this attached because we can use this to sew the top part onto the purse later. And as you can see, it's nice and snug on there. Unzips. Zips. Real nice. Now we are going to start assembling. So we have our two side panels. The top zipper panel that we just finished sewing. The two pieces for the bottom panel plus the cardboard. And the side and handle piece. So we're going to start with the bottom just because we have to assemble it just before I can put the whole thing together. So get a piece of cardboard that's approximately eight inches long by an inch and a quarter wide. Um, it can be a little bit different depending on your gauge. I just basically look to see if it is within the jasmine stitch panel. This is going to cover on top of that, so no one will see it. It just provides a little bit more structure, and I think it gives a better finished look. So you're just going to want to thread your yarn needle with your yarn of choice. It's honestly easier to wait and put the cardboard in until the very end, so I just sew up all the way around until I have like a little bit left, and then I can just slip the cardboard right in there. I want to make sure that the wrong side is facing towards the wrong side of the jasmine stitch. You won't necessarily see the inside of the bag, I just think it gives a nicer finished look. And just make sure that it looks good and then you can start sewing. So you're just going to insert your hook in the top right corner of the half double crochet panel into the top corner of the jasmine stitch panel. And just leave a tail that's about an inch and a half to two inches long just so the stitching doesn't come undone. And you're just going to go and insert your needle through the back of that first puff stitch and up through the half double crochet panel just like that. And then you are going to insert your needle into the half double crochet panel through the jasmine stitch panel. And you're just going to keep working this stitch pattern all the way until you have about this much left of the second long side and the short side on the right. Now that I have sewn up the majority of the bottom panel, I just have this top little corner left. I'm going to take my cardboard and I'm going to just slide it in. There you go. You can't even tell that it's in there, but it just provides a little bit more structure. And now that you've done that, you could just continue sewing up as you've been doing. It might be a little bit more challenging now that the cardboard is in there, but it shouldn't be that much more challenging if you cut it so it wasn't too large. You just want it to be like a little bit of an extra um, support system. And now that we are at the end, I'm just doing my last stitch right here. I'm going to insert my hook as if I'm going to do a stitch. I'm just going to tie it off like that. I'm going to do that one more time. And then I'm just going to break the yarn. And just to make your life easier in the long run, I'm going to have you guys go ahead and weave in your ends now. It is so much easier to do it after each step 
instead of trying to do it all at the end. Now we're going to sew the bottom portion to the two side pieces. And we want to make sure, obviously, that the wrong side is facing in, the right side is facing out. If you have a hard time figuring that out, just remember that we started making the puff stitch first going this way, which means our tail from that slip knot is going to be on the bottom left, and you finish on the bottom on the top right. So just make sure that you have the wrong sides facing inwards and the right side facing out. I find honestly that sewing from the right side out works better than sewing from the inside and flipping it inside out. So that's what we're going to do. So you're just going to insert your needle into the bottom corner of the bottom panel and then insert it into the bottom corner of your side panel. I'm going to pull through leaving an inch and a half to two inch long tail and then you are going to stitch it up the same way that you stitched up the bottom panel with the half double crochet panel that we just did. You're just going to go back and forth and back and forth. Try the best that you can to keep your puff stitches aligned just so it doesn't get sewn on crooked or too much on one side. They should align perfectly. I normally do two to three stitches per puff stitch and then a stitch in that space between the puff stitches. Once you get to the end of the row you're just going to tie it off as we did before, insert your needle, tie it, and do it another couple times just to make sure it's secured in place. You're going to break the yarn and then I recommend weaving in your ends before you move on. Weaving in your ends could be a little bit confusing here. I just insert it into a puff stitch a couple of times and then turn around and go the opposite direction one more time. It should be pretty secured in there, but feel free to do it however many times you see fit. Working it in and out of the puff stitches. This might not be the right way to do it, but it's always worked for me. And then you're going to repeat the same thing on the other side. Before you break the yarn on the second panel that you sewed onto the bottom, we are going to start attaching the side and handle piece. And I'm just have you guys keep that on so you can sew on the bottom just like this. So you should have tied off right there, but just keep going with the yarn that's already on your needle. I think that's just smarter um, and it just makes it easier for you in the long run. Just keep sewing like we did before. And now that the bottom of the side and handle piece is attached to the bottom, if you have a lot of excess yarn like I do, I'm just going to use it and I'm going to sew up the side and then I'll break my yarn after I tie it off up here and we will continue on the other side. And now that you've made it to the top, insert your needle into the first puff stitch of the top part of the side panel and tie off with that just so it is a nice seamless corner. Don't mind how I'm dropping the bag. So we're just going to tie it tight. Get the yarn back on the needle and just tie off a second time. And just make sure that's nice and tight before weaving the ends. But if you don't pull from that puff stitch right there, it's going to be a little bit of a gap between the side and the top. So you want to tie off 
with that top puff stitch just makes it look a little bit nicer and now I'm just going to go and weave in my ends by working the yarn through all these little puff stitches now you're just going to repeat that on the other side you're just going to grab some more yarn attach it at the bottom corner work up before you tie off using this top puff stitch right here and then you're going to repeat the same thing on the other side you can either start like we did before where we attached the bottom and worked up one side before moving on to the other or you can work in a u shape like that and start at the top corner work down then work the bottom and then go back up whatever is more comfortable for you as long as it's just firmly attached it doesn't really matter how you do it and once we have all of that sewn up we will come back and we will attach the top and then we will be almost done all right now all we need to do is sew on the top zipper and if you remember we have a long tail left from when we sewed the zipper onto this top piece if you don't have a long tail left that's totally fine you can just grab some more yarn and attach it after the fact basically and this might be a little bit awkward just because the handle is already on but you're just going to go through and sew like we've been doing so just your first stitch should be into the corner between the handle and the side panel and then you're just going to go through one of the stitches on the handle into the top part and just keep going down the line making a conscious effort to keep it a straight line you don't want it to start veering upwards it can be a little bit tricky so just go slow take your time And then just carry on the rest of the way around and you are all set once you have finished sewing on the top you need to weave in all your ends I was smart and did it as I went but that is it that is your oopsie daisy bag all finished looking super gorgeous and perfect for any outfit for any season okay my friends that's it that's all you need to know to make your own oopsie daisy bag and I hope that you now have a very beautiful one that you're going to get a lot of use out of. If you have absolutely any questions at all, please leave them down below. I will do my very best to answer every single one. But if it gets to be too busy down there and you want to DM me over on Instagram, it's just crochet by AK. Hit my line. I will help you out. And while you're over there, give me a follow. Follow me on all my socials. You know you want to. We had a good time together, did we not? And if you want to help me out a bunch, you can like and subscribe that just helps to show that you guys like videos like this and hopefully I can make some more tutorials in the new year. I haven't done a ton but I'd like to do more for you guys. And if you want more free content from me because you think I'm so funny, fun, and entertaining, you could check out my podcast with my friends Savannah and Morgan. It's called The Crochet Authority. It's available on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and YouTube. All right. Thank you guys so much for making this pattern. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you get so much use out of your new purse. I love you all so very dearly and I will see you next time with a brand new video. Bye, everybody.